Building conservation is a rather modern concept which uh, developed in the second half of the 1800s and that came as, as an answer to a very uh, arbitrary restoration of the medieval building by the Victorians. The main representatives are William Morris and Philip Webb, who in 1877, they founded the SPAB, which is the Society for the Protection of Ancient Building, and they wrote the manifesto for the society. The manifesto covers the basic principle of conservation, which have developed since then. And the aim is to preserve historic buildings for future generations to come and to appreciate the heritage, learning from the past, but also building for the future. The reason I wanted to get involved with built heritage was because of a feeling that you have when you walk into a space like this and you think of all the people and the hundreds of people that worked in this building and then later worshipped in this building or carried on their trades in certain buildings and then you start looking at the details and the craftsmanship and how buildings tell a story in that way and I think really drove me to pursue it as a as a career to try and understand that better. So when I first learnt about the building, it was before I actually entered the building. So I was told a lot about the non-conformist history, the setup of their Sunday school, the way that they provided support for a mix of different groups, and especially the context in which it was built and the purpose it was built for was really, really inspiring and maybe just loved the chapel before even visiting it. And then when I arrived at the chapel, just the, the beauty and the colours and the, the, the brightness of the chapel made me feel very calm and also knowing the history of the chapel made me feel at ease here. As a child I was interested in the arts, architecture, buildings, local buildings um, and it's such a joy and privilege to be, have the opportunity to work with historic buildings and the skill and the dedication that lots of people had to build these buildings in the first place and they're all repairable, that's the amazing thing, is that they are all repairable. I haven't come across a building yet that can't be repaired sympathetically. I think the main quality that somebody needs to have in approaching the conservation of a historic building is first of all the right attitude. You need to have clearly the, the, the confidence in the project and the knowledge of the material and the shape and the history of a building, but also you need to have the right approach. I think the conservation is very important to have a humility to understand that something is already there and you need to learn to know what's there and the changes that have occurred, why did they happen and how, what's the best way to approach this building or this specific problem because you are not the designer. You have to learn what someone else has done and why the person has done it. I've been working in conservation for the last four years as a craftsman. Um, I'm currently training, trying to work out what I want to be doing with my career in conservation. The main part I enjoy working on historic buildings is being a part of the kind of process of the making. So finding old pieces of work that have been touched for ages and then being able to kind of repair it and put it back together and maybe getting them machined up, getting the new pieces in and then also fitting them in and making the whole piece looking united so it's, it looks like it had been 200 years ago. When I'm working with historic materials, I love all the sensory experience of it. You touching the the material, whether that's a cold stone or a warm bit of oak, and it sounds cheesy, but everything has a smell, everything has a sound when you tap it. Uh, of course, visually, it's very important. You get an assessment of the kind of patina it might have developed over time. And when you start to use all of those senses, you really feel like the sort of fine-tuned analyzing machine. And uh, there's still lots of things I don't know about, but the things I have learned, uh, are, are, it's really cool. You feel like you've got a superpower almost. People come to me and they walk into one of my buildings that's been finished in lime wash and lime and nice joinery and wax polish. And they come in and say, this has got a fantastic sense of place. And they come in and they say, I can feel the history. I can sense that this is a special place. Well, a lot of it is to do with the materials and people then want to visit and are encouraged to come to those areas, then it really builds up a huge sense of community. And you have to look at historic sites and think to yourself, well, that historic building is the one thing that everyone has anchored to. And that's kind of spread out throughout the community. And it gives an enormous amount of civic pride. And that is something that we really have to build upon.
So one of the aims of Union Chapel is to preserve and conserve its grade one and two star list building to its highest standard. The aim is clearly to preserve the built heritage to, for future generations, but also to contribute to the sustainability and well-being of the community and all those who come into contact with Union Chapel. I try to bring as much creativity and well-being to our local community and use creativity as a way to empower, to build confidence and just to build a connection. So historical buildings like Union Chapel play a really big role in our local community space and sense of well-being and belonging and identity. So having a physical space to come into and know is a major part of history is a really useful thing to have as a physical presence. Conservation and sustainability kind of go hand in hand. It's about reusing what you have, repairing it, saving it so that you're not introducing new materials and introducing a greater carbon footprint to a project. It also preserves the heritage and that feeling of identity for a, a local area, which can in turn aid the economic sustainability of an area. So it's kind of a win all across the board. Um, you're using less material, you're getting local people involved, you're boosting the economy. The whole of uh, sustainability and conservation I think is important because there's a lot of buildings that aren't inhabited and are kind of just being left abandoned and it's, it's worth restoring and repairing them and kind of upgrading them to be livable because then you're restoring the whole community. Most communities are built on the history of the local area. So if you're restoring and making those buildings habitable, then you're bringing back community. We are just caretakers or custodians of the buildings that we inhabit, and it's up to us to repair them, to put them back into good heart, and to pass them on to the next generation. And you have to train up the next generation. They have to come through and appreciate the same values and then start looking after the buildings themselves. And there's a huge industry involved with training people up for working with historic buildings. Uh, the SPAB will have a scholarship and a fellowship. Uh, we have the Prince's Trust and Prince's Foundation, which are training people to come into the industry. And what's interesting is that it's for everybody. It's not some exclusive elite club that you're joining. This is for everybody. Union Chapel is actively promoting and delivering workshops around heritage. Um, the goal is to be able to make the knowledge and history of Union Chapel more accessible and available to a mix of our community groups and community members. So taking part in different activities to learn about the heritage, to look at the archives, to see how arts and culture have played a massive role through this building can make you feel more connected to your local area, to your local community, and maybe also give you a sense of pride and a sense of responsibility to look out for this building and to continue the work that it does going forward.